Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome on back to my channel. Welcome back to each and every one of you. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day today. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys a few tips and tricks for OBS Studio that should also work with Streamlabs OBS, but I can't guarantee I don't use that one. But they should work over there as well for how to minimize encoding overloading, any frame drops in OBS, lag, just general optimizations for OBS. But before we jump into the video, I just want to say thank you guys very much for 700 subscribers on YouTube. You guys are freaking awesome for that. This has been an amazing journey so far, and I'm going to keep going with it. So if you guys are new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well if you guys enjoy my content, my presence, and all that stuff. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And on top of that, if you guys do not want to miss any future videos, hit that little bell notification button as well. And I have my Twitch channel linked in the description down below. If you guys want to come hang out over there, we have an amazing community of people. We just play games all the time. We just hang out, have fun. We get immersed into the game and it's just a good time. We'd love to have you over there. And on top of that, real quick, we do have the Patreon. You guys can go and support the channel for as little as $5 a month and earn some extra perks and incentives as well. Some cool stuff you guys can get over there. And we do have the merch link down there as well. If you guys want to buy some cool Mr. J merch as well, that'd be awesome. And now, without further ado, let's jump into the video. So this video, this one specifically will be catered more towards uh, the beginners, the casual market of people just trying to use OBS and just the people who are not so tech savvy. So if you are the tech savvy, the advanced, and the people who want that nitty gritty details of how to use OBS, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know, let me hear you want that video. And I will make another video dedicated towards the advanced people on how to optimize OBS and things like that. And just the, the cool little features within OBS that you guys can utilize. But this one will be directed towards the more casual sort of beginner audience that are just trying to get their, get their foot in the door for OBS. So if you are trying to fix any encoding overloading or dropped frames or lag within OBS that you're noticing in your stream or even in OBS itself, the first thing I can recommend you do is switch away from Streamlabs OBS. That's step one. You guys may not realize this, but, but Streamlabs OBS is actually more CPU intensive than other <laughs> programs out there. So if you're using Streamlabs OBS and you're seeing high RAM usage, high CPU usage, or just in general, if you're just seeing any performance stuff, I would first of all switch to OBS Studio. There are a ton of tutorials out there on how to set everything up. It's super easy. It's not like it's super, uh, super bad or anything. And if you want tutorials on how to set up OBS Studio, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me hear you want that video as well. And I'll make that one as well. But that's the first step, is switching away from Streamlabs OBS and coming over to the dark side of OBS Studio because it is way more optimized and it is so it gives you so much more control over things. The second thing you can do <laughs> that's actually in OBS Studio is you want to go down to the settings button down here and you want to go over to the advanced tab over here on the left. And then at the top of the advanced tab, you want to look for process priority. Yours might be on normal if it is you want to set it to high. What this will do, just in a simplistic terms, is this will change OBS's priority on your computer to high. So if you're running a super intense game, or if like you're on a lower end PC maybe, and running your capture card through a console and your capture card takes this huge chunk of your, your computer's processing, setting your process priority to high will allow OBS to maintain a higher priority and not have its resources taken away. So whatever OBS needs to run will be given to it so that way the games don't just like stranglehold your PC. So setting your process priority to high will help negate a lot of those encoding overloading or dropped frames or whatever. So if you don't have the setting on high, basically the game, if you're playing a super demanding game, will just, it'll, it'll give OBS less room to work on your PC and allow the game to just expand forever. And so your frames will just start dropping even more because OBS cannot produce any more frames. So super simple one there, process priority, set it to high, and your streams will look smoother already. It'll just be a set it and forget it type of thing, and you're good to go. Okay, so this next one, I'm gonna try to keep it real simple. Real simple because it can get very complex and it can get it can be very easy to get lost in this one here. 
but I'm gonna try to keep it real simple. And again, if you guys want a more advanced tutorial or, or more advanced explanation of this, let me know and I can make a video on that. So this next one is how to fix the encoding overloading that you get in the bottom left corner. So if you just want the fix for it, this is again for the casual people, if you just want the fix, open up your settings. You go to the output tab over here on the left, make sure your output mode is on advanced so you can actually see all the bells and whistles that I have here. And before you get before you get overwhelmed at all the new settings you have so the one you're going to want to look for is the encoder here so the encoder is the process that takes your obs preview window back there and converts it into a video format that twitch youtube facebook and all them can actually utilize so that could that video conversion process the encoding process is very taxing even the best of computers will be brought to their knees because this encoder process can be that taxing at times. So the way to lessen the impact on your computer is to find this one right here, CPU usage preset. They even give you a little legend here saying higher equals less CPU. So if your computer is, let's say, if your computer is anywhere between seven or five years old or something like that, and you know that your computer, even at that time, wasn't the best of the best, then you want to stick to these first three. Ultra fast, super fast, very fast. Those are the three you want to stick with. If you think your computer was like middle of the road, mid tier for a couple of years ago, you could probably get away with very fast, faster, or maybe fast may be fast. If you're doing some kind of console stream where you're using the capture card a lot of time, you can probably get away with something that's a little bit in between medium to very fast, um, even on an older computer because all your computer's doing is doing the capture card. But if you're on like a super, super low end system, yeah, start with ultra fast and work your way down because as you go down this list, as you go from ultra fast, very fast or whatever, as you go down the list here, it will be using more and more of your CPU. So start from the top and work your way down. And whenever you see that encoding overloading, just go back to the previous one and save it there. Hey guys, future me, I just wanted to inject real quick that I did forget to mention about the N, V, E, and C encoder options here that you guys may see. You may also see something like QuickTime or some sort of an NVIDIA sync or something like that. Some other options, depending on what your computer's actual hardware is. But I just wanted to mention that the NVIDIA NVENC H.264 encoder here, the, the big mouthful of numbers and letters that you see there, that's an incredibly amazing option if you have that as an option on your computer. The way to know that you'll have this option is if you have a graphics card as a gaming PC, as a graphics card from like the 900 series up. So if you have like a 960, 1060, 2060, 3060, any of those, any from like that generation on, anywhere around there, you'll have this option. And why this is so special is because the NVENC is the NVIDIA encoder. So the entire encoding process that I just explained can be offloaded to your graphics card. Those new gen graphics cards from the 900 series and up, they have a special dedicated encoding chip. So that entire process I just mentioned about the encoding can be offloaded to that dedicated chip, meaning that your entire computer does not touch the encoding process. So it can really help bring up your in-game frame rate as well as it can also save you some OBS frame rate as well. So if you have the NVIDIA option here, I would use that. If you don't have the option here, then continue with whatever I'm gonna say next. <laughs> the next thing you can do to help with the encoding overloading is inside of your video tab here on the left, you wanna change your output scale resolution. So if you're still seeing encoding overloading even after changing your encoder preset, this is where your resolution needs to be changed because your resolution and your frame rate do actually affect how much of a taxing process the encoding process is. So the higher resolution and the higher frame rate, the more frames the encoder is having to produce, the higher resolution each frame is and all that stuff like that. So to keep it simple, the resolution and the frame rate down here both can be changed if you are still seeing encoding overloading. So if you're at like 1080p, drop it down to like 720p. If you're at 720p and you're still seeing it, drop it down to like 540 or 480 or even like a 360. You can type in custom numbers here. You can see I'm at 1664 by 936. That's not on the list here. You can type in custom numbers. So if you wanna type in 360p, you can, whatever it is, you can do that. You can also change the frame rate here from 60 FPS to 30 or even 24. 
And actually, whenever I first began my streaming career back like seven, eight years ago, I actually streamed at 360p resolution and uh, and 30 or no, it wasn't even 30 FPS. It was 24 FPS. So 360p, 24 FPS, and my bit rate was like 1500 because I didn't have the best internet. So as you can imagine, my streams looked like butt. They sounded like butt because I had a bad microphone. I was not Mr. Big Ballin' PC guy uh, at, at that time at all. That snipe, that snipe, that snipe. Oh, that snipe, though. Ooh, get wrecked. That MLG snipe, though. And so don't let people convince you. Don't let people get you down about your setup not being enough. You can definitely make things work. People hung out with me. People stopped by. I gained a following even with that lower quality stream because I myself was fun. I was talkative. I was entertaining. All that stuff. So don't let people convince you that stream quality is everything because it's not. So that's the encoding overloading that's the simplest way to put it is the encoding overloading just means that your your computer is having a struggled time trying to actually encode the stream so you can change your cpu preset to anything faster up here and these are going to be good to go for that and then you can also do your resolution change and your frame rate change and that should help lessen the impact of it as well so the last and final tip that I'm going to give you guys is something super basic, super simple. Again, if you guys want a more advanced tutorial on OBS and how to work and all that stuff like that, let me know and I'll make it. But just a very quick, simple tidbit on how to fix any of the uh, OBS dropped frames, because if you guys don't know, OBS itself has its own frame rate. It's the same frame rate that you just set up here in your video tab, this frame rate here is the frame rate OBS will try to actually produce and try to try to work at. So you can actually see live OBS frame rate right here, and sometimes it'll drop below whatever you set it to. So mine is 60, sometimes I'll be at like 58 or 45 or whatever. And to help fix that, just a very simple thing to help fix that. So all you have to do is right click your preview window and hit enable preview. See how it's check marked? Click that and now your preview window is currently disabled, and all you have to do is click the button to re-enable it if you want to. So you can just re-enable it if you want to re-enable it so you can see stuff, or you can go ahead and right-click it and disable it again. And what this will do is it will actually stop your computer from having to render this preview window, so it'll save your computer resources from having to render that entire preview window. And it's super simple, that's, that's all it is. And then you'll notice a huge bump in your, your FPS down there in the bottom right corner. It'll be awesome, it'll save you a ton of frames, it's fantastic. And again, it's just a super simple button press to bring it back. It's not a confusing process at all. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope this gave you guys some sort of insight as to how to fix certain very common issues inside of OBS as well. If you are new to OBS Studio, I hope this helped you as well. And that should do it, guys. That should do it for today. That That is the that is a, just a few tips and tricks to help you guys combat the encoding overloading, any frame drops in OBS, anything that can make OBS run a bit more smooth. So again, this is a very simple video. If you want the more advanced tips and tricks, the one that, that kind of goes a little more in depth on how the process actually works in OBS, let me know, and I'll make a more advanced one for the more advanced users who will utilize that. But for you casual people, for you newbies out there that are just learning OBS, studio i hope this helps so thank you very much for watching guys thank you very much for being here and hanging out with me today if this did help you guys if this did solve some of your issues feel free to leave a like on the video as well it does help me out a ton with the youtube algorithm if you like me my presence my vibes all that stuff like that click that little subscribe button and if you don't want to miss out on any future videos click the little bell notification as well on top of that, if you guys do want to really support the channel, if you guys really like my vibes, we do have the Patreon link and the merch link down below. The Patreon link gives you guys cool incentives for uh, for supporting my channel for as little as $5 a month. And the merch link, of course, offers you guys some pretty cool merch you guys can wear around and, and support the stream with. So if you guys want to do that, there you guys go. The links will be in the description down below. But that will go ahead and do it for today's video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for hanging out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.